Yo, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a YouTube thumbnail in Adobe Photoshop CC. So stay tuned. Yo, what's going on? I'm Jay Carter Ray from growonyoutube.com teaching you how to be better at YouTube. I'm a YouTube certified marketer. I've been able to grow my YouTube channel to over 35,000 subscribers bring in over 400,000 views per month and be able to make a full time living creating content online. And that's what I want to help you do. So let's get into how to create your thumbnail with Photoshop. Now I will be doing one of my uh, like grow on YouTube type thumbnails that I usually do. This is one of my gaming thumbnails. Basically the harder one is when you're cutting out the background and you're trying to get you know a specific person and you're trying to just get the shape around them so that's why i'm going to be walking through that if you have a gaming channel then you can just put a picture of the game in the background or you can use the same methods that i'm going to be showing you to apply it to your gaming videos but i'm going to show you the most difficult thing so i'm going to show you how to do that so that you can do that and you can do all the easier stuff basically so this is our YouTube thumbnail template and basically we're going to do something very similar to this. We're going to have a triangle across the video with so, or a triangle across the thumbnail and then we're going to have some text over it and we're going to have a picture of me on the right hand side pointing towards the text and then I'm going to show you how to do a little branding element like this as well. So first of all, this is the background layer some people may want to change the color of the background and you know that sort of stuff so i've come back from the future to quickly let you know that the size of your project needs to be 1280 by 720 in order to create a new project all you need to do is go to file go to new and then when this comes up it will say new document and it will give you the ability to actually change the width and height. So here you'd add 1280 and then at the height you add 720. Then you can save the name of the project here or you can click here to actually save a template using this. So if we wanted to save a YouTube thumbnail template, we could click this button and then write thumbnail temp and save preset and then we can always click this when we create a new project and it will bring up the correct size that we need so if we press create right about now it will give us the shape that you'll be seeing us use throughout the rest of the video we're just going to leave the background layer white you may want to change the color you may want to add some layering some texture or whatever from other photos and stuff just to make it a little bit more interesting but we're just going to leave it straight white. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to create the shape that is going to be overhead. There's going to be a shape that's basically a triangle that covers half of the thumbnail and allows us to put our text over that so that it's really easy to see. And this is the type of thumbnail that I've generally generally been making throughout the past i don't know six months or whatever because I, I like the aesthetic i like what's going on so in order to do this we just need to create a rectangle so we'll make a rectangle it doesn't really matter to be honest it can be any shape and then we are going to change it into a triangle now honestly when i first did this on on all my videos now on all my video thumbnails they're all just rectangles that is just that are just turned a little bit but since then I've learned how to actually turn this into a triangle. So let's do that. Now in order to do that, I've just pressed Control and T, which allows me to get to the transform menu, which means that when I press the right click, now I can see all these options. So right now we want the skew option. And then what this will do is allow us to change this into a triangle. So there we go. This is a triangle and then we'll hit enter. And now that's done. We've got a triangle for our vid um, our thumbnail. And in order to use this, we just want to move it a little bit into basically 
the rotation that we need so that we can actually have the text show up there so i am going to rotate it around this way and i'm going to make it a little bit larger we are going to hold the shift button when actually trying to resize this triangle and what that does is it makes sure that when we're resizing it it's doing it equally across the whole spectrum of the triangle so what would happen if you didn't hold shift is when you try to uh, make it smaller or make it larger you could actually mess up the shape of it like this so as you can see this is a completely different triangle now when we're moving it around like that but if we use the shift then it's just the same exact shape just getting bigger and that's what I want to do. I want to scale it up. I don't want to change the shape. So here we have, we've scaled this up. We've got a black background. I would never, never use a black background on my videos because it just doesn't, it's just not, it's, it's too dark. It just doesn't pop out for me personally. If you want to use black, you can definitely go and do that. I actually do like the color, the color is black and white and I like how they work off each other but I'm going to change this color real quick so let's double click on this layer and I'm going to change it to my brand red my brand red is ff3333 and that is the red we're going to be using for this particular triangle or rectangle whatever you want to call it shape now what I would do now is I turn the opacity down a little bit. We turn it to mm, actually depends. It depends what kind of video you're making. If there's like a picture in the background, then having the opacity down a little bit makes it better. If there's not, then this is really just a stylistic choice. But as you can see, I've changed the opacity to 86. It really doesn't matter what number you do. Just get it to where it's looking how you want it to look. So we could go through all the text and all that sort of stuff. I think that is what we'll do. We'll do the text and all that sort of stuff. And then we'll do the photo last because that's the hardest part. So let's do the text. We'll just get that text bubble here. By the way, if you are not seeing these anchors on your shape, then make sure that you've got show transform controls on. Because if you don't have that on, then you won't be able to see what's going on with your shape and you won't be able to actually resize it and stuff like that. So let's get the text tool. Okay, I've just realized that there must be a new feature in Adobe Photoshop that when you use your text over a shape, it like, it makes the text fit into that shape. That's a new feature that I haven't experienced before. So we're not gonna talk about it in this video. So what I had to do was I had to create another text box outside of this specific shape because it really limited what I was able to do with the text. So if you're having that same problem, that is how you fix it. So let's get this to be small enough that we're able to see all the writing. And let's actually move this rectangle over a little bit and make it a little bit larger. Let's make this a little bit smaller. We'll get that to around there. And let's actually make the fast very, very big. So we'll move the font up to around Mm, that's a bit big. I don't know if we can fit all that in. I think that's fine. And then as you can see, this text is actually overlaying the rest of the text. This is actually terrible. You obviously don't want this in your thumbnail. So over here at the type layer properties, you will see that there are two different numbers. The first number is the size of the actual font. And then the second number is the leading, which is basically the space between each line. So we just wanna move this down here so that we can have this on its own line. It's not super close. And as you can see, now it just says make thumbnails fast. Very, very easy, very easy to understand. I kind of wanna make this smaller because I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of space for my actual face. So let's get rid of thumbnails and we'll just have make thumbs fast because that's a lot easier to deal with. And then we can move that over there and we can have that. So let's make this a little bit larger. And there we go. 
Now, what I'd also do with this rectangle is we can add a drop shadow to it. I like that. That adds a little bit of depth to it. And as you can see, that makes it, brings it out a little bit. And we we'll also want to add a drop shadow to the text. But not that much drop shadow. That is a lot of drop shadow. You don't want that much. That is too much. Let's bring the distance in so this text pops out, but it's not like... It's not too out in your face. You could also add a stroke depending on what you're doing and where your text is. It could make sense for you. Right now, the stroke doesn't really make my text look any better, to be honest. If anything, it hampers it. So we'll get rid of this stroke because it's just, it's just not necessary. It's not doing what we want it to do. So we'll turn that off. And then we just got the text on the red background and then we just need my face to be in there pointing over there like yo look at that or we could have some graphics that show that we're talking about thumbnails whatever you want to do this is what you would put over here over here i'd like to have text to make it very very clear what this video is about and you want to basically make someone who's looking at this thumbnail curious to watch the video to click through and actually see what the video is about so don't necessarily make this text the title of the video make it something that is going to make the person who's watching it curious but also make it so that the person who would really really want to watch a video understands that this is a video that they will enjoy so i've just moved this text over a little bit to give it a bit more space on either side to make it just look a little bit better. We could move that a little bit over as well. And now we are ready to get our image in. I hope you use the marketing tip that I just gave you regarding the text because that will help you with your click through rate a lot. So let's go into our image. And now we basically want to get the background of this image to disappear. So in order to do this, we go to select then we'll go to color range. And then right about now, you can see that we get a little eyedropper. So I'll pick one of these. And then if we hold shift, we can actually continue adding all these different shades of green to the colors that are gonna be taken out of this. So we just wanna click all around here because the lighting on my green screen wasn't the best. And now we need to click all the way around here and I'm holding shift and clicking on the left click of the mouse. And this should get us what we need. And then I'll hit OK. We actually don't want this to be a background layer. So let's make this a layer from background real quickly. And you just press right click to do that. And as you can see, we've now got a selection around me. And in order to change this into what we want it to do and get rid of the background, we need to create a mask. So there's this button down here that will create a mask for us. And But as you can see, it's actually cut us out. It's not actually cut out the background. Next, in order to get rid of the background, you want to go to image, adjustments, invert. Or you could just press control I, and that will do this for you as well. And you can edit the mask even further to make this selection even cleaner if you like by just double clicking on this over there. And then you'll be able to see that you can like smooth it out. You can feather out the, the edges, the border. You can feather out, you know, a lot or feather out a little bit. And you can change, you know, shift edge. You change the radius of the edge and all this sort of stuff. You really don't need to do this, to be honest. But if you really want to get in there and make sure that everything is exactly how you want it, then that is how you do it. Now, what I would also do right here is I'd edit this actual image. So we'd go to image adjustments and then we will go to brightness and contrast. This is the basic stuff. But before we actually go to that, we have to make sure that we're selecting the actual image and not the mask. So now we've selected the image over here. We can go to image, we go to adjustments, and then we go to brightness and contrast. And now we can boost this up a little bit and we can boost up the contrast. And I think, yeah, that's fine. And then I'd also actually add 
uh, curves to do a little bit more color correction. But this isn't super necessary. And if you don't know what you're doing, then you might want to leave this alone. But I do know what I'm doing. Basically, up here deals with the light lighter ends of the picture and down here deals with the darker ends and this is basically just like eqing if you've ever done that before it was kind of similar to eqing if you've ever done audio engineering before but i'm assuming you haven't <laughs> so here we'll, we just add a little bit of curves to it to this we don't need to go over overhaul and now we can basically drag this into our other thumbnail so we'll drag this over here and then we'll put this right here and as you can see this is hilariously large so now we need to actually step back by using alt and the zoom tool which actually zooms out and now we'll hold shift and we'll make this much much smaller and then we'll hit enter and then we can zoom back in but oh no we are facing the incorrect direction whatever will we do we look like a donut right about now and of course we do want to make sure that this layer is under our shape layer because that just looks better but in order to actually flip this over you don't go to image and go to you know there, there's something over here that you can do you can go to adjustments and then i swear there's like a flip or something image rotation yeah don't do this don't go to image and then image rotation because this will image this will flip the whole canvas which is really really annoying instead you need to press Control and t to give yourself those transformation options like before and then you press right click and then you can flip this image horizontally or vertically and now you can see we flipped the image and i am now pointing at how you know to make thumbnails fast i'm pointing at the text over here we can also make me a little bit bigger there we go and then we are nearly done the last thing you should do oh there's more there's more than that we can also add a stroke to me over here which I like to do. So let's go to stroke and we'll go to five points and we'll change the color to our brand red. But as you can see there, this isn't so clean. This isn't as clean as we'd like it to be. There's a lot of artifacts around here, lots of different little dots and that sort of stuff. So how do you get rid of that? Very, very easy. The reason why these dots are appearing is because there's a little bit of image where there shouldn't be. All of this should be gotten rid of. There should be no background. So basically, you just want to erase all the, the, the image around there so we'll do that and you can get rid of it and then we can make this a little bit smaller we want to make this super hard as well uh, and actually that's not let's just make it smaller so that the stroke is exactly what we want it to be there we go and now it's just you know a line around me and we'll actually make this stroke a little bit bigger because it doesn't it's not really popping out that much go to the stroke and we'll turn this up to 10 there we go nice stroke this isn't the cleanest stroke is it the smoothest stroke we could definitely go in there and make it smoother and cleaner like you just want to use the eraser to do that if that's what you want to do as you can see it's getting smoother cleaner we can go all the way in there there you go but <laughs> that's not the best way to move forward and here we have most of our thumbnail done and what i'd like to do on top is to just fling a nice little arrow in there so here's an arrow from one of my thumbnails that i got earlier and then we'll point the arrow in the direction of the text just to let people know that it's not just my finger pointing there it's also the arrow and we want to put this arrow above the shape so here we are here we have the arrow above the shape we can make this arrow larger and we can also add 
a stroke and a drop shadow to the arrow. As you can see, there's already a drop shadow on the arrow that makes it look much better. This is it without the drop shadow. This is with the drop shadow. I'll show you exactly how that is done. You just right click, go to blending options and then go to drop shadow over here. And to add a stroke, you go to stroke and with the red, I'd add a white stroke and we pump this up to, I think two is actually pretty good or three is quite nice right about there. And that's actually inside. Let's see what outside is looking like. I actually like the inside one. Yeah, let's do inside. And there we go. Now we've got a thumbnail. Now with this, I probably would add some stuff to the background. I'd make the, the back not just white and I'd add some sort of color or texture that makes it look less plain but this is pretty much perfect you know we're pretty much done here we could make it make me a little bit smaller so that my finger and head can also be in this picture and obviously i'd clean up all the stroke and all that sort of stuff to make sure that this looks as great as possible but that is how you make a thumbnail okay so this is from the future full disclosure i realized that i forgot to show you how to do this logo and i lost the photoshop file that i was using to show you how to do the thumbnail in that particular video in this video so i'm just going to show you how to do the logo really really quickly it's not going to take long you don't want to have your logo at the bottom right of your thumbnail because when you actually see thumbnails on youtube or you see videos on youtube there's a time code in the bottom right hand corner that lets you know how long the video is so if you have your logo over there, that will just be blocked by the time code. So don't do that. So in order to do this, it is really, really simple. It, this is basically a rectangle with words in. And I like to have really, really simple logos like that. I just like to put rectangles around things because it looks pretty cool. And it, it can make something that looks a bit whack a whole lot better. So let's quickly make a rectangle. We just use the rectangle tool over here on the left. And now we have a rectangle. I like to add a stroke to this. So we'll add a stroke of white to this rectangle. And we do want to make this stroke around, let's do two pixels and we'll see how that looks. Mm, let's give it a three pixels. Yeah, that's fine. And then what I would do is I would set the opacity down a little bit. So let's just put this over here. Let's get rid of this text. So you can clearly see what's going on here with the logo. I will turn the opacity down. So we'll come over here. We'll click on the rectangle and then we can go to opacity. And we can actually lower this to around, let's say 61. This just makes it look a little bit more interesting. You don't have to do this. You could keep it the same opacity if you like. And then I'll just put my channel name on there or my name. And I think this has, yeah, th this is a new thing. I've never, this doesn't usually happen. It doesn't usually like bond to the rectangle. Let me <laughs> create another text file. Okay, so what I've just realized is when you see this text icon, when it goes into a circle, that means that it is bonded to that, um, what is it called? That shape, I believe. So when you actually write your words, it will stay within that shape. But if you write outside of it and you see this square, then it will go as long as you want. So let me show you an example. If I write now, as you can see, it just started in the rectangle and it stays in the rectangle. It doesn't go out there whatsoever. Now let's make this smaller. This is actually good for what we want to do right now. And that's the logo. That's the logo done. <laughs> There's not much after that. You can add a drop shadow to it. I like to add drop shadows sometimes, but sometimes it's just not necessary. As you can see, the drop shadow makes it pop a little bit and it just makes it stand out a little bit more so there's an easy easy logo just use a rectangle use a stroke you can use your own brand colors 
obviously don't use my brand colors make it more unique to yourself and you can get a really simple basic logo up and running really really quick obviously this is a top tier graphic design logos but there you go quickly before we go in order to get the red arrow just go to google and type in red arrow right that's what you can do or you can go to pixabay to get a copyright free red arrow and then you know get a png one these are better anything that says png or has a background like this when you see a checkered background that usually means that they've cut out the arrow around so you can easily just drag the arrow into your photoshop file but that is how you make a thumbnail. I hope this video helped you out. And before you leave, I also want to let you know that I did make a free course on the five step system that I used to get over 35,000 subscribers, 11 million views and go full time on YouTube. And that course is free for you to join at growonyoutube.com forward slash free course links is always in the description the card all that sort of stuff so definitely go and check that out and i'll see you in the next youtube guide peace out it's been a cold winter and it's lasted far too long so all this warmth i share with you